Hi there. Welcome to the demo for Heirloom Computing's Elastic Batch Platform. Elastic Batch Platform, or EBP, is our batch job execution and operating environment. It's a business process manager uh, in the form of an IBM uh, JES2 subsystem equivalent, and it comes complete with MVS job control language, uh, so JCL uh, compatible interfaces, uh, and a RESTful web services and XML control interface. When EBP is coupled with Heirloom's Platform as a Service admin dashboard, our cloud-based scheduler can uh, front-end many cloud-resident EBP systems, allowing jobs to be fanned out to a pool of cloud execution engines. Today, though, we'll go through just a brief demo of EBP. We'll take a COBOL batch application, uh, translate it to Java, and deploy it. Then we'll use some JCL to tell EBP to execute the code. The environment we're using is similar to one you may have seen in previous demos. Uh, we have uh, Wildfly 9. Uh, that's going to host EBP for us. We're using Postgres as the database. We have a simple COBOL program in our Eclipse IDE. So let's get started. So EBP runs under Wildfly or other application servers, or it can run standalone should you wish. Uh, it has its own built-in Jetty web server. Here we're running under Wildfly, and this is the web page interface for EBP. This is using those web services and XML responses under the covers. You can see here there's various jobs uh, we, can, we can handle here. We can create a new job class. We can start initiators. Uh, we can submit and manage JCL jobs. Uh, we can reboot the system. There's one piece we are interested in here today, which is the config. So we'll jump down there now. Uh, now, obviously, there's a vast number of options you can set here. Uh, we're not going to go through them all. But what we do need um, to configure is to tell EBP where it can find our programs. The JCL is going to try and reference a program. Uh, we need to be able to tell EBP where to go look for our, for our deployed applications. So I'm going to add an entry to our system lib here. And I have a directory created already. So we'll just paste that in there. There we go. So that's where, uh, that's where we're going to export our, our final jar to. Uh, and that'll, uh, that'll allow EBP to find it. So let's go save that and EBP will just give us that XML confirmation. Uh, we can take a quick look at the uh, at the entire config file. Uh, as you can see, it's just an XML file. There's a bunch of settings in there. Uh, they're all documented. Uh, we're not going to go through those today, but crucially, there's our there's our system lib that we just set uh, so we know where we, where we can deploy to. Okay, let's close that down. Uh, the last thing we're going to do here is go back up to the top uh, and bring up the systems operator console. Now, we can access EBP through Eclipse. We can access it through its web services. But it does come with a system operator console. If you're familiar with um, JES environment on the mainframe, this will look relatively familiar to you. Don't worry about the warnings right now. It's just saying it can't connect to a security subsystem. Uh, EBP, just like our ETP product, um, is able to take RACF-like security and map it down to LDAP servers. Um, we don't have an LDAP server configured right now, so it's just warning us about that. Okay, let's jump over to Eclipse and take a look at our program. Uh, and this may be familiar if you've seen previous demos. It's a pretty simple application. Uh, it's going to open up a database connection. It's going to read everything in the database and print it out. There's our database connection right here. And there's some code that just confirms that the database connection is good, that it can get a cursor, and then it'll loop around and, uh, and read that data. So let's build this. We don't have any. Uh, we don't have this turned into Java code right now. So we'll do a build. Now we've got some Java code. So now we can run it. If we run this right now, we should get a failure because we've got no table. So let's go set that table up in uh, in Postgres. So here's our Postgres. We'll do a quick create table. Great. Let's run this app again. Just make sure the table is good. Shouldn't get an error, but we're not going to get any data, obviously. All right. We'll go put some data in. Earlier demos created this data through um, CICS screens. Um, we're not going to take that to a slightly more complex route today. We're just going insert, to uh, insert data straight into the table. So there we go. Put a quick record in the table. Uh, let's read this one more time. Remember, we're just running this as a standard COBOL application right now. Six executing Java, um, running from Eclipse. So we'll run this. And OK, so we've grabbed the data. OK, that's good. So our database is working. Our code is working. Let's now take this code and package it up and put it into EBP. So first thing we need to do is export this application. We're going to export it using the Elastic Cobalt Deploy Wizard. Uh, and 
that's already filled in for us. So uh, we're going to save this as list table .jar. So same um, same jar name as our as our product uh, our project and our application. Uh, we're going to put it in that system lib where EBP is going to be looking. And we've got a main class set up here, um, which is our list table class. So if we deploy a jar into EBP, uh, as long as that jar has a main class, when we attempt to call a program of the same name as the jar, the main class will get executed. OK, so that's all good. Um, we'll finish this. It'll bundle it up and write it to the correct place. So that's now stored away on our file system for us. What about EBP? OK, so. If we head over here, we actually have an EBP server viewer in, uh, in Eclipse, so we can see jobs as they appear. How do we deploy them? Well, I have a piece of JCL here, and anyone familiar with JCL will recognize this. Uh, the important piece here um, is the program is called List Table. So that's what EBP is going to go looking for. So let's deploy this. And this isn't going to work right now, um, but we'll submit it. And we're going to get an error back from the EBP server uh, and it says class A is not defined. Well, that's absolutely correct. We did not define um, a class or an initiator. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so we can do that uh, in a couple of ways. We can do it from our web service interface, or we can do it directly from the, um, from the system console. So let's take a look. Um, classes, we don't have any classes here. So let's define class A. It, does, uh, it executes JCL jobs. Obviously, there's a bunch of different types of jobs that this process manager can handle. Uh, so we'll create that class, and we'll create an initiator for it. So we'll start an initiator. There we go. OK, let's go back here and attempt to submit this one more time. All right, now it got submitted. There's no hold on it. We have a job number, uh, and obviously the message that comes back from EBP. If we go over and look at the EBP server view, uh, in fact, it's already run. Um, it ran with CC as zero, so it completed. And we can take a look at the output here as well. So here's the output from that job. Here's the scan of the JCL. So it's confirming the JCL is good. Does a job analysis start. And clearly, this is a simple job. Um, there's no id cams in here or anything else. We support all of that. Um, this demo is, you know, really just to show you how you would how you would deploy and then and then execute a simple program. And here's the output steps. So we can see it picked up that uh, that record. Uh, let's do a, a quick double check here. Let's go insert a different record. Um, so we'll insert uh, a new record in our database here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, that insert worked. So let's execute this again. So we'll submit it a second time. You should see another job appear in a minute after this is polled around. There's the job. Let's take a look at that guy's output. And there's our two records. If we go back to the systems operator console, um, we can see uh, the uh, the execution happening here. We can actually take a look at output if we wanted to. Uh, there's the hover over for it, uh, or we can do a few a full pop-up view. And again, there's that there's that same output. Uh, but if you're testing simple applications, or if you're just trying to make sure the system is working correctly, um, and uh, and you want to see that output directly from your development environment. We have that EBP server view built right into Eclipse. So a simple demo, um, but you've seen us go from uh, raw um, COBOL, a little list table application. We've compiled it to Java. Uh, we've deployed it as a JAR file that EBP can find. Uh, and then we've executed a small piece of JCL uh, against EBP that uh, was able to call that, call that list table program and grab the output. I hope that's piqued your interest in uh, LM Computing's Elastic Batch Platform, or EBP, um, you can contact us at uh, support at .cc, or you can go to our support website, support.elum.cc, for more information about EBP uh, or all of our other offerings. Uh, thanks for watching, and see you next time.